if you were to instead add guacamole every day to your diet, you would be much, much better off. So let's talk about it. So I just love avocados and especially guacamole on my eggs, on my burger, on other foods, put it on the salad. I use keto chips or keto crackers. And that's really the biggest problem with guacamole is how do you consume it with a chip that is, you know, it's not filled with corn and corn oil and vegetable oils um, that are highly inflammatory, right? That's the problem with guacamole. You're at a restaurant and um, what are you going to eat it with a spoon? Well, you know, people like those chips and then they start feeling uh, pain and inflammation in their joints. And so if you consumed it with healthier foods, you would be actually in really good shape. But guacamole has some really good things in it that I want to talk about. And I will put a really good recipe down below exactly how to make it. It's really, really simple. So let's start with the avocado. Why are they so healthy, right? Everyone keeps talking about this monounsaturated fatty acid, right? It's the same fat in uh, olive oil. And uh, apparently it's really good for insulin resistance and supporting a healthy heart. So avocados have like 71% monounsaturated fatty acids. And olive oil has roughly about the same, but just FYI, lard is about 50% monounsaturated. Tallo, which is beef fat, is about 50% monounsaturated. And butter has about 29% of it uh, monounsaturated fatty acids. Without getting too distracted, I just want to mention one thing about saturated fats. Every single study that I've seen that state that saturated fats are bad for your heart, et cetera, et cetera, um, are not differentiating between the high fat diet and the high carbohydrate diet. Uh, they all come with high carbohydrates. So how can anyone say that it's the fat that's causing the damage and not the high carb or even the combination of both, which creates glycation, which is a kind of the binding of your uh, fats with your proteins, creating a big problem with your heart and your eyes, and it plugs everything up. There was a, a very huge study involving 135,000 Canadians, okay? And they looked at the difference between what happens when you eat a low carb versus a high fat diet. And which one of those is more significant in relationship to mortality? And this is what they found. It's the lowering of the carbohydrates, not the lowering of fat will extend your life. I mean, significant, like 23% lower risk of dying and also an 18% lowering risk of getting a stroke, which is pretty significant. But consuming avocados and other fats uh, on a healthy keto plan with intermittent fasting uh, does several things. It helps make you more satisfied. It allows you to fast longer which will then really get you into ketosis much better because it's that frequent hunger and frequent eating that really kind of raises insulin. So this is one of the big reasons why you want to add fat to your meal so you can fast longer. And avocados are a great way to do it. Avocados have a lot of other things as well, phytonutrients. They also have glutathione, which is a very powerful antioxidant for your liver. They have carotenoids that help your vision and also to prevent macular degeneration. Avocados are good for inflammation uh, in your arteries, in your brain. And so overall, it's a very healthy food. Next ingredient is lime or lemon, okay? I've done a lot of videos on this. First of all, if you actually have a lime or a lemon and you just put that on it instead of the juice, you get a good amount of vitamin C, okay? So that's one thing. Number two, you get citric acid that can actually prevent kidney stones. If you're on the ketogenic plan, that could be a potential problem for some people who are at risk, but not if you drink enough water, like 2.5 liters per day, as well as having citrates. Citrates bind with the oxalates and prevent those stones. Also, vitamin C uh, is good to prevent fat from accumulating in your liver. It's good for the liver in general, and it's also good for overall weight loss. Okay, we have avocados, lime, or lemon, and then sea salt, right? Sea salt has like at least 84 different minerals, all the main minerals, plus a lot of trace minerals that are hard to get in our foods. And if you're on the ketogenic plan, you definitely need more sea salt. If you're deficient in salt, you'll feel weaker. Okay, that's one of the common symptoms. If you're concerned about too much sodium, there's a great type of salt 
that is lower in sodium, but higher in these other minerals. I'll put that link down below. And then we have the tomato. You know, there's a lot of different varieties or types of tomato. Um, nowadays, unfortunately, in the grocery store, they're just basically, you know, tasteless. But if you get a good tomato and put it in your guacamole, it can really help you with many different things. And one being lycopene. Lycopene is a phytonutrient that's really good for the heart. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's good to protect your skin from ultraviolet radiation. It can act as a sunscreen. It also has anti-cancer properties and is good for your bone. And then we get to the onion. And if you can get a red onion, it's a little bit better because it's going to be higher in this main phytonutrient called quercetin. Quercetin or quercetin, however you pronounce it, is a very interesting compound, uh, especially for allergies, lowering histamines, but anything related to allergies, it's really good. Hay fever, things like that. It's also good for lowering blood pressure. It's good for gout. It's really good for your immune system. And it can even decrease your risk of certain types of cancer. And if you can't get red onions, just do any onions because all onions have this uh, compound, but red tends to have more. And also onions are really high in vitamin C. This is why the used to, way back when they had a scurvy, the sailors used to consume onions uh, to get their uh, full vitamin C complex. Onions also with this next ingredient, garlic, really help your liver complete this phase one, phase two detoxification, right? Which is really important in converting poisons to harmless particles. So they go from fat-soluble chemicals and toxins to water-soluble chemicals. The main phytonutrient that a lot of people know about is allicin. And this compound does a lot. Garlic is the heavy hitter with so many things, especially antimicrobial. So if you have um, you know, parasites or too much of the wrong unfriendly pathogens in your body, whether it's virus or bacteria or fungus or yeast or mold or candida, boy, garlic is what you need to take. Garlic uh, could be considered a natural antibiotic, but without the side effects. Garlic also is great to act as a natural blood thinner. So it's really good for the heart. It's really good to lower your blood pressure. It's really good to uh, prevent cancer. And it's also good for your gut microbes. It's also a potent anti-inflammatory. So if you can just stick that in any different types of foods that you're eating, the more the better. And then we come to another ingredient in guacamole called cilantro. Cilantro has some really interesting things as well, uh, specifically to protect the liver against heavy metals, okay? So it can act to bind with these heavy metals and act as a, a natural chelator, which means to claw or to bind and to pull out these heavy metals. Uh, cilantro also has been studied for uh, seizures because it has anti-convulsant properties, which is interesting. So as you can see, guacamole is a great heavy hitter of something that can improve your health. So if you were to consume that every day on your foods, uh, this is what would happen. Number one, your blood sugars would be much better because you would be able to fast longer. You would have an improved cardiovascular system. You would have less pathogens in your body. You would have a stronger immune system. You would definitely have more energy and less inflammation. And all of this on top of the benefits of being on the healthy version of keto and intermittent fasting, I think hands down guacamole is something that you should include on a regular basis. So please comment down below on your thoughts about guacamole in general, if you like it. And since I talked about putting guacamole on a burger, you should really check out this video I did on one of the healthiest foods, which happens to be the burger. I put it up right here.